Hello, my name is Dennis Swindle, and I am first and foremost a Christian, a believer in God, a believer in the Bible, and certainly a believer that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In fact, I'm a minister for the Milan Church of Christ in Milan, Michigan. But I'm also a Republican, an avid Republican, and that's the reason for this video. And it's entitled, If Donald Trump Loses. Now, don't misunderstand. <laughs> I'm voting for Donald Trump. In fact, I'm voting a straight Republican ticket. Now, according to most of my Republican friends and associates, uh, there's no realistic way that Donald Trump will lose this election to Kamala Harris. Uh, a few insist that it will be the biggest landslide victory in perhaps the last 100 years. And others, although maybe not that optimistic, still believe it'll be a decisive victory for Donald Trump and it'll all be over in five or six hours from the time voting starts on election day, which, by the way, is exactly one week from the day I'm recording this. And uh, incidentally, I've heard numerous so-called prophets that claim to predict the future say that Donald Trump again will win. Just it'll be such a one-sided election. Again, it'll be over in just a few hours. And, uh, and I want to say one thing about these so-called prophets that claim to predict the future. Did you know the Bible teaches, you can read this in Deuteronomy 18.22, that if I claim to predict the future and I'm wrong only one time, then you should no longer listen or respect anything I say about the future, okay? Some people need to hear that. But again, although I hope that my friends, my associates, and even these so-called prophets are correct, I'm not that convinced. You see, in my very humble opinion, and it is humble, believe you me, I believe this will be a very close election. So close, in fact, that I think there's a possibility Trump could lose. And that's not what I want. Don't, don't hate me for saying that. That's not what I want. But I think that's very, very possible. Let me segue from that to this question. In the event that this ends up being a very close election or that Trump loses, <laughs> I even hate saying that, who will be the blame? Or at blame. Who will, whose fault will it be? You see, if it's a very close election, there's still a lot of Republicans that will be extremely upset that even Trump could possibly lose to Kamala Harris. So if it is a very close election, they'll say, well, you know, it was because the Democrats still rigged the election and almost got away with it this time. Or they'll blame, you know, um, weak Republicans that failed to vote for whatever reason. But in the event that Trump loses, now listen to me, who will be at blame? Now, if Trump does lose this election, I think you know what his excuse will be, and it'll probably be the same excuse of many, if not the majority of Republicans. They will blame political interference, political fraud, that somehow the Democrats managed to steal another election. You'll hear that, and that could get very ugly. <laughs> By the way, getting back to my original thought, if it ends up being a very close election, or if Trump does lose, who is to blame? And please don't hate me for saying this. I would pin the blame on Donald Trump. You say, well, how could you say that? <laughs> because of what God says in his word. Now, let me explain. I realize that many of you will disagree with what I'm about to say, but at least hear me out. My number one concern with Donald Trump, dating back to the 2016 presidential election, is his pride, his ego, arrogance, some would say. Now, perhaps I'm dead wrong about that, but I base my feelings about his pride on many of his public statements. Now, I'm not going to go through those public statements. If you've listened to Trump speak at rallies, if you heard him in some of the debates, you maybe you will get the same feeling that I get about him being a very prideful, egotistical man. All right? Now, I have heard in his defense, Trump, Trump's defense, that many people claim that after the initial assassination attempt, that that really humbled him. 
that he's a changed man, that he's nothing like the Trump of old, uh, that he rarely brags now, he rarely takes credit for his previous accomplishments as president, that he now gives credit to God for everything that he previously accomplished. He now says that he can only win with the help of God. Uh, And I'm even told by some that he even now apologizes for past mistakes and even apologizes for some of the derogatory or insulting comments that he's made toward his political rivals. Now, I pray that's true. And if that is true, if he's truly a changed man, a humble man now, then you can just forget watching the rest of this video because it's meaningless. But my problem is that with the exception of the first few days after that initial assassination attempt in which he was injured, I haven't noticed a major change. And so for those who claim that he has changed dramatically, I mean, he is a totally different man. Then has the liberal press concealed that so well that people like me really don't see that? And maybe they have, okay? All right, bottom line. Give me just a few more minutes and we'll be done. What is it in God's word that makes me think if this election is a very close one or that Trump loses, that he will be the blame? Now, if you're not a Christian, then what I have to say these last few moments will mean little or nothing to you. I understand that. But if you are a Christian, listen carefully. Here's what the Bible says. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Folks, that's the promise of God. That's not just something that might, may, could happen. No, that's a promise. Continuing, Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. And we certainly need a wise president, right? Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty, but before honor is humility. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride brings him low, but a humble spirit will retain honor. Now, isn't that what we want for our president? And isn't that what we want for Donald Trump to have lots of honor? Well, the Bible says the humble in spirit will retain honor. In Proverbs chapter 6, many of you have heard this before, verses 16 and 17, remember where the wise man says these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. And in verse 17, one of those things God hates is a proud look. Now that infers an arrogant attitude, an egotistical attitude. In fact, in Proverbs 21, verse 4, a haughty look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked are sin. Pride in the sight of God is a great sin. Let me just read two, well, one more passage. Well, maybe two. All right. Isaiah chapter 2, I'm reading verse 11 and 12. Listen. The lofty looks of a man shall be humbled. The haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. In other words, if we don't don't give God all the credit now, in the last day he'll take it and we will lose. (laughs) For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought down. It'll be brought low. Some of you are familiar with the story of Nebuchadnezzar recorded in the book of Daniel, chapter 4, about him having this dream that Daniel later translated to him, as it were, about this huge tree, just an amazing tree that was growing up almost as high as heaven itself, and then it was cut down and stripped of its bark and branches and leaves and all this. Only the stump was left, and that was a prophecy about Nebuchadnezzar, what would happen to him because of his pride, arrogance. And that is a lesson for all leaders of all time. And again, if those that claim Donald Trump is nothing like the man he was, if they're right, if they're correct, then forget everything I've said. But if not, 
some way, somehow, Donald Trump will be humbled by God if he doesn't humble himself. Let me close with this. I realize many of you are praying for Donald Trump that he'll win this election. And I couldn't agree more. By the way, you better be praying for Biden while he is president because we are commanded to pray for our leaders. Read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, the first three or four verses there. But may I suggest before you pray that Donald Trump will be elected, pray this, that he will humble himself if he's not already done so. Now, if he has, that's fine. But if he hasn't, that he will humble himself before God has to humble him. Last passage. Thank you for listening. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 14, you have heard this time and time again in res uh, respects to our own nation and what this nation needs. Listen carefully. The prophecy. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, someone once said, I think I'm quoting this correctly, that most kingdoms will inevitably choose to follow the path of their leaders? Well, if we want this land to be a land that God heals and listens to our prayers, how does the prophecy start? If those who are called by my name will humble themselves, it all starts with that. If you don't have the humility, then you can forget God's blessings and help. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and may he bless this election.